You are rolling. Yes. Uh, the history of SNIA. Well, SNIA is a social center that has been occupied for the last 14 years by a suburb experience. It has been um, a workshop of the community more than uh, like always in Rome, a bunch of artistic people or young people getting together and moving into a squad. This has really been an experience of the suburb moving into it and taking uh, care of a space that has been uh, left abandoned by the administration by uh, for more than 30 years. Um, before that, uh, in the beginning of the 20th century, this place, this factory was um, a factory of glue and uh, a shoe factory. And then during the fascist period, it was uh, taken by the state and uh, confiscated and transformed into a bomb factory, which made uh, iprite, mustard, mustard gas bombs that were used in Somalia and Eritrea especially, and which are responsible for the Italian genocide of the Eritrean people. And um, I mean, a part of uh, the bombs came from here, not all of them. Uh, after which, after World War II, it became a truck deposit for a bunch of years, 15, 20 years, we still don't know how much time. And then it was left abandoned. When we took it back um, 14 years ago, the first thing we noticed was that it was completely destroyed and the, the walls were crumbling and the, the roofs were coming down. So we reconstructed everything and we started building laboratories based on the non-profit, based on uh, sharing experience more than teaching. Uh, uh, so that means if there is, for example, a school of Italian for strangers, uh, the people working in the lessons always accept the languages of the other people. So there is a sharing, like we give lessons of Italian, they share with lessons of Arab or, or, um, or Bangladesh. So um, the importance of this place is really the fact that like so many people got together for ab absolutely <coughs> none of the uh, society accepted methods, which is no prosper, make money, and uh, and so on. This is instead a place where we decided share, uh, divide your food into two parts, and uh, divide your experience into two, and it will multiply into four. Beautiful. And the quick story about the guy that was the saboteur, or the whole bunch of sabotage going on. Tigrino here? Sabatino was was a worker here uh, in 19 from 1930 to 1945, and. Um, he was 17 years old, he was a worker, a chain worker, and uh, when he understood that the machines were reconstructed in order to build bombs, um, he decided to sabotage them every single day. And after two months of sabotaging, he was caught, uh, how do you say, with his hands in the... Uh, hands in the cookie jar. Yeah, hands in the cookie jar. And he was taken by the fascist militia, not the Nazis, uh, the fascist militia. They took them to the park here and they shot him in the head. One bullet. That was the that was the fate for any communist or anarchist in the country from 1922 to 1943. Every every one of them was like, uh, if you belong to the communist party and you were sabotaging a factory, that was a bullet in the head. That was it. We found out all this in a record that was left abandoned in an old uh, one of the old rooms of the factory. We opened it and there was hundreds and hundreds of uh, archives, ar archives of, of all the workers that had been working here. And that's how we found out that like a third of them were actually resistance in the city. One of the girls that was working here held, uh, helped um, an American parachuter to escape from the Nazi occupation in 1942. And she, she hid him in uh, her um, in her room and her father was uh, very angry because uh, he was like Americans at all, but then he understood that they were coming to liberate the city. So there's there's a lot of stories of human stories of like uh, resistance yeah. as we were talking the other yeah. day. Yeah, nice. I like that history. It's a beautiful story. Yeah, yeah, it's very beautiful. And she was taking bombs. Uh, the American parachuter was making bombs in her room, and she would carrying her. She would carry them with her bicycles covered with cabbages underneath the, the Nazi eyes uh, to the resistance in the other suburbs of Rome. So they were. A Team. They were working together. One was making the bombs home because he was an engineer, and the other one was bringing them because she she was a, a bicycle trolley girl. Ah, perfect. There's yes. your connect continuity. Yes. Thank you, Jizo.